Okay, we've been looking at the Linux operating system, its kernel, and its initial RAM disk, in which some distributions that are, are tiny are uh, actually the full operating system. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at how to take um, the initial RAM disk that uh, can be compressed different ways, but is a uh, gzipped CPIO file. So uh, let's quickly, did I already mount it? Okay, I've already mounted, okay, in the folder we're in, I have the files we've been working with, and this core.current is uh, the um, tiny core, core ISO. It is a shell uh, minuscule uh, distribution. It's only about nine megabytes, and that's as the ISO, the actual file system is even smaller than that, as we'll see today. Um, and I have mounted that into a folder called ISO. If we list uh, what's inside the ISO folder, we see a boot folder. And inside the boot folder, we have, well, the folder for our bootloader uh, configuration. We have our kernel, and then we have our core.gz, which on a lot of distributions is called initrd. That's I-N-I-T-R-D dot gz, or sometimes it doesn't have the dot gz, which is our, our national RAM disk, which if you've been watching the previous tutorials, is a very basic Linux file system that's loaded to RAM at the same time the kernel's loaded for the kernel to use to load the rest of the operating system. In some cases, like with TinyCore, it's actually the full operating system, um, file system that is. So what we want to do today is I'm going to show you how to extract those files to a folder on your computer. And we'll play around with those files in future tutorials. But today we're just going to be looking at extracting them. So. That is inside this ISO boot folder. Let's make another directory for us to work in. We'll just call it core. I'll move into the core. And I will copy, and I, I got a copy, I can't move it because uh, the ISO is read only. Uh, from that folder, from the boot folder, our core, and I'll copy it to the current directory. So in the directory I'm in is only that core.gz file. And I'm going to show you two ways to extract the file system from here. But first, let's have a look at the size of this file. You can see that this file is just under 6 megabytes. It's 5.7 megabytes. So the entire ISO, I believe, is about 9 megabytes. So the rest of it's the kernel and the bootloader. But the actual file system uh, is only 5.7 compressed. It's gzipped. If we look file and look at the file type, it says that it's a compressed gzip. The original file was called core.cpio, which, as I mentioned in previous tutorials, the CPIO is just an archiving format. It's basically an image of the operating system. Um, so, two ways to compress this. CPIO is a program. It's going to be on pretty much all Linux distributions by default. I think it's pretty standard, which is why it's used uh, for the initial RAM disk. Because uh, other file systems, such as Squash file system, may not be installed by the kernel by default. That's why you need to load the initial RAM disk so that it will have the tools to load the other file systems and so forth and so on. Um, but we're going to use the program CPIO, dash I for input, and then we're going to redirect. Oh, I'm sorry. I <laughs> almost skipped a step. We have to unzip it first. We don't have to. I'm going to show you in a minute a way to do this all in one command. But first, we're going to use g uh, unzip or gunzip, however you want to say it, uh, on that file. We've unzipped it. We list, and that removes the gz file, but we have the file that was within it. We can say file and look at the core file, and now it will tell you that this file is an ASCII uh, CPIO archive, which is what we're working with with this tutorial. Now we will use the CPIO program dash i and redirect that file into it. Oh, and I got some permission, uh, not uh, operation, not permitted errors here. And, uh, but most things did extract. The thing is, this is a file system with permissions. The permissions are, you know, stored inside the archive. Otherwise, the operating system wouldn't work if it didn't know what was executable and what was not. And certain parts of the, that operating system, you have to be root or sudo to access. So really, I should have ran it like this, sudo.cpio-i, and then redirect it in there. Um, depending on what you're going to do with it, in this particular case, extracting it like this, um, if we were to use it for a chur root, which we're going to use in a future tutorial, 
I don't think it would make all that big of a difference. But just to be safe, you would want to sudo or run this as root, whichever you prefer. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove everything in this directory. And now it's all gone. We could do that, as I was saying, with one command. So first, let's recopy over the gz file. So there's the gz file. And again, let's real quick list it out. Uh, I meant to show you before. <laughs> We looked at this was 5.7 megabytes. Well, once it's unzipped, now we'll just do it again. It doesn't matter. Now, if we were to list it out, you can see it's now 8.7. So it went up three megabytes, which doesn't seem like a lot. But if this was a larger operating system, you can see how much it's compressed. It's it's compressed. It's almost uh, you know 50% uh, of what it is. So 50% of what it becomes. So basically, it's a, a third smaller in this case. Again, all depends on what type of files are in there. So again, I'm just going to remove everything in this directory. Yes, remove that. Then I'm going to copy back the gz file. So we looked at unzipping it and then uncompressing the archive. Uh, we can do it all in one step, really two because we're piping, but one command kind of using uh, zcat which basically is like cat, but for zip files. So it's going to cat out the contents of the gzip file, which would be this. And then we're going to pipe that into cpio-i. And again, we want to run this as either sudo or root uh, so that we can uncompress all the files because some of the archive files, again, only have root permissions, so they won't uncompress because you don't have permission to if you're not root. Boom, we did it. List out. We still have our core.gz file there. We can remove that if we'd like. It's telling me it's right protected because off the ISO it would be. Uh, just yes, remove that. Don't need to be sudo or root to do that. And now we have the root file system. And again, on certain operating systems, this would just be the initial RAM disk. It would be a very basic operating system. In this case, as far as tiny core, it's actually the full file system for the core version of tiny core which is still very small but it actually does have more tools and you can actually it actually has a package manager that you can install stuff with um, and if we do a du dash h here you can see now it's 11 megabytes so after unzipping uh, the gzip portion of it and then extracting things through the uh, cpio archive um, it is now double the size so you can see how important compression is especially when you're trying to work with tiny uh, operating systems like this keeping the size down because this file system is bigger than the original ISO image um, and we still have we don't even have the kernel uh, loaded um, well actually we do it does have a kernel I believe but whatever um, so that's extracted I'm gonna leave that there for a future tutorial we are going to learn about Cheroot and actually be able to run this operating system within my current operating system using my current kernel. So, but that was it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. We're going to be playing around with this a lot in the future to uh, basically extract this stuff. We can modify, well, you know, let's look at this a little bit more. We can, just by going in here, see all the files that was in that uh, compressed file system on the ISO, uh, just like we would like any other operating system. So I can go in here, I could modify some of these config files, I can modify the boot process, I can do other stuff like that. Once we get into chur rooting, I can actually run programs in it to install this stuff or make other configuration changes. And then what we can do is we can recompress it into a CPIO file and then to a gzip file and then we can actually put that back into an ISO, uh, make that ISO bootable and we've recreated the operating system uh, and made our own uh, tiny core in this case, uh, live CD. But we're going to look at doing that with different operating systems and then eventually we're going to look at kind of building one somewhat from scratch. Um, but a lot of fun stuff coming up in future tutorials. I'm going to leave this file system in this folder so that later on we can manipulate it in future tutorials. So as always, this is part of a series, a new video every Monday. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. I recommend you check that out. If you're watching the playlist and you can't access certain videos in it, that's because they haven't been published yet. A new one will be published every Monday. I have to say that, otherwise people ask me why they can't access them. I think it'd be obvious. Um, 
So check that out. Check out the full playlist. If you're watching this in the future, maybe the full playlist will be up. You can watch it all at once. Otherwise, subscribe so you don't miss any videos. I have other tutorials on Wednesdays and Fridays that you might enjoy as well. Uh, be sure to comment below for comments. If you have questions, comments are a bad place for that. Uh, join me in my IRC channel on my uh, website. If you go to my website, there should be a link to the IRC channel under social networking. Also check out my Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus pages to keep up to date on stuff. My website's filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. And I hope that you uh, not only like this video so that I know that you not only like it, but like with the like button so that I know that you like it. Also subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I hope that you have a great day.